Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. The big news this week, or in recent days even, is the Sony A9. The A9 is coming out with a, a bang. It's a very, very impressive looking camera from Sony, and a lot of people are talking about it for good reason. I've gone through the specs. We have here, um, what did I end up with? I end up with seven very significant things. Uh, possibly nine. A couple of them I have question marks next to because we don't know for sure about these things yet. But these are these are features, these are technological specs that are superior to a traditional DSLR. In other words, reasons you might buy the Sony A9 over a traditional DSLR. And I mean a high-end traditional DSLR. I mean, this is a new Sony flagship that is competing with the likes of the Nikon D5, the Canon EOS 1DX Mark II. So this is pretty impressive. And this is probably the first time that Sony has come out with a camera that is truly uh, a pro-level competitor. Let's look at the nine, uh, the nine things. The seven for sure possibly nine. First and foremost, we've got the advantage with the sensor. Both the D5 and the EOS 1DX Mark II are 20 megapixel sensors. The Sony is a 24.2 and it's that new stacked sensor. So uh, it remains to be seen, but I think all in all, we're going to see ISO performance pretty much on par, but we do have a resolution advantage of four megapixels. It's not a lot, but it is enough. It's 24 versus uh, 20, so it's worth bearing out. The next thing is very significant. We've got 20 frames per second for burst shooting speed. So when we compare that with the uh, 14 frames per second of the Canon, 12 frames per second on the Nikon D5, uh, very significantly faster, almost double the Nikon D5, and um, you know a good, good bit faster, 20 versus 14 than the Canon. So we're not talking one or two here. We're talking trouncing the other two. So for a professional camera, frames per second is very important if you're a sports shooter, action shooter, uh, bird, wildlife, things like that. Um, this is definitely a winner in that area. So that's a big one, number two there. Number three, uh, the OLED has a new uh, 3.7 million dot viewfinder. I'm a big fan of OLEDs. I'll take an EVF OLED over... Uh, a conventional OVF any day, and I think that is a big advantage over the optical uh, old-style viewfinders on these other two. Um, there's just so many advantages to an EVF now. They've come along so far. Um, to me, that's a big win for the A9. And I'm sure for some of you that's a controversial point. You're like, oh, no, I still like my old viewfinder. But technology's changing. The EVFs have gotten so good now, I don't think there's any advantage to an OVF. Uh, and this camera also bla uh, brags zero blackout, so um, can't really complain in that area about it. Um, 4K video. This thing beats the Canon and the Nikon, hands down, with the codex with the uh, ability of how and, and what it can do for video. I mean, Sony is making great strides in this area, and they're a leader in this area. Neither Canon nor Nikon beats Sony as far as uh, in, in terms of shooting video and in shooting 4K video. And the A9 brings some um, some very nice uh, codecs here. We've got um, 100 megabits per second in camera. We've just got some really nice stuff coming out of the A9 there. Number five is perhaps one of the... Maybe, maybe perhaps the second most significant of these, and that's um, the in-camera uh, sensor shift five-axis image stabilization. So we don't have that in the Canon or the Nikon. So it's not a question of comparing and one's better. It's just it's absent in the Nikon, absent in the Canon. You have to rely on the lens technology. In other words, you've got to buy the lenses that have the image stabilization. This is a big advantage in the Sony because you can use, when you adapt any lens to the Sony or non-image stabilized lenses um, from Sony, you've got image stabilization. Just in-camera Im image stabilization is just a big bonus to have and kudos to Sony. Now we've got a flagship full-frame pro camera that has in-camera image stabilization. I think Canon and Nikon are going to have to pick up their socks in this department they're going to have to start competing on this. Okay, number six, we've got the three-inch tilting touchscreen, 1.4 million dots. So um, the Canon has a fixed touchscreen. 
The Nikon has a fixed touchscreen, so the advantage here is the movable touchscreen. And this is an advantage. Whether you're shooting from down below, overhead, having a moving LCD is always an advantage. And I actually prefer the, the very angle LCD, but I'll take a tilting one over a fixed one any day. So another point in favor of the A9. The seventh point is two SDXC card slots. Now it's in comparison to two XQDs on the D5 and to um, one XCF, so a CF slot and an XCFast slot on the, the Canon 1DX. I prefer the SDXC cards. They're less expensive, the performance is very good on them, and I like that Sony's put two SDXC. I like that it's two of the same too. Um, so in my opinion, that's an advantage point to the A9 and over both the Nikon and Canon in this area. Now, the two that I mentioned that I have a question mark beside, which are, um, I think we'll say, remains to be seen. Um, claiming some crazy AF on this new A9, Sony always comes out and says that their latest camera is the best autofocus camera out there. They always say things like that. Um, this has a 693-point phase detection AF, 25-area contrast AF. Um, you know, that's in comparison to 153-point on the D5, 61-point on the um, Canon EOS 1DX Mark II. Um, on paper, it sounds great, but as is often the case, we'll have to see this in real life, in performance, in a sports, birds, wildlife situation where we need to track something and we need, and, and you can see hands on in real life, which is the better autofocus. So that's why I have a question mark beside it because, again, on paper, it sounds fantastic and it sounds like it's a winner. But in real life, it may not beat the Canon and the Nikon. From all first reports, it does sound like it's very, very good, and I have uh, high hopes for it, but we need to see if that is truly borne out. Now, the last one is the metering. We've got uh, 1,200 zone metering versus 180,000 pixel RGB 3D color matrix on the D5 and 360,000 pixel RGB, 216 zones on the 1DX Mark II. So is this 1,200 zones better is it i mean again technically it sounds better as a spec on paper does it have better metering um i think the sony's do meter pretty well and i'm curious to see how it performs but i'm not prepared to give that a full win yet that's why i've got a question mark beside it so there you go that's the um seven things that trounced a pro dslr the canon and the, and the um, nikon offerings here on the sony a9 and possibly nine there's two more there with the question mark what do you guys think? Do you agree with me on these seven or possibly nine points? Um, do you disagree on some? Are you interested in the Sony A9? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, agree? Disagree? Are you interested in it? Is this something? Are, is this Was this the final coffin in, uh, final coffin, the final nail in the coffin for your existing system? Is this, is the Sony A9 you're now going to switch from Canon. You're going to switch from Nikon. You're going to switch from the Micro Four Thirds system. Is this has this done it for you? Is this is this the winner? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. I'm I'm very interested in the A9. It's a very interesting offering from Sony. Very strong offering. Sony continues to lead the pack on technological advancements and on an advanced time uh, schedule of bringing out newer cameras as well. So it's very interesting. Uh, really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.